How shall I begin my story that has no beginning? In these arroyos, my great-grandfather raised cattle before the Anglos ever came. Our roots go deep in this place, deeper than the pines, deeper than the mine shafts. This is my village. When I was a child, it was called San Marcos. The Anglos changed the name to Zinc Town. Zinc Town, New Mexico, USA. This is our home. The house is not ours, but the flowers, the flowers are ours. My name is Esperanza, Esperanza Quintero. I am a miner's wife. Eighteen years my husband has given to that mine, living half his life with dynamite and darkness. The land where the mine now stands, that was owned by my husband's own grandfather, now it belongs to the company. Who can say when it began, my story? I do not know. But this day I remember as the beginning of an end. It was my saint's day. I was 35 years old, a day of celebration. And I was seven months gone with my third child. And on that day I remember I had a wish, a thought so sinful, a thought so evil, that I prayed to the Virgin to forgive me for it. I wished, I wished that my child would never be born. No, not into this world. Are you sick, Mama? No, Estelita. Are you sad? Are we going to church for your confession? Later, when I see my child. fighting again with those Anglo kids. Oh, they think they're tough. But you promised me you wouldn't. Papa says if an Anglo makes funny, it's to let him have it. Never mind what you, Papa. Hold still. Does it hurt? Nah. How come the cake? Never mind the cake. Go get your father when he comes off shift. Tell him to come straight home. Effective fuse? Well, ah, you're all in one piece, so what's the beef? You know the beef, this new rule of yours that we work alone. We're taking it up with the super. Super's busy with your negotiating committee. So much the better. Now, wait a minute. Super's the one made the rule. He ain't gonna give you no help. He will if he wants us to go on blasting. Read your contract. We'll get somebody to read it for you. It don't say nothing about no helper. Listen, Mr. Barton, there's blood in that mine. The blood of my friends, all because they had to work alone. That's how he gets blotted over the rocks. When there's nobody help to check your fuse. And nobody to warn the other men to stay clear. Warning's a shift foreman's job. Foreman wants to get the ore out. Miner wants to get his brothers out in one piece. You work alone, savvy? You can't handle a job, I'll find someone who can. Who, a scab? An American. Is there going to be a strike? Ramon, I don't like to bother you, but the store lady said that uh, if we don't make another payment on the ready this month, they'll come and take it away. 
We are only one payment behind. I argued with her. It isn't right. It isn't right, you say. Was it right that we bought this? This instrument? But you had to have it, didn't you? It was so nice to listen to. I listened to it every night when you were out at the beer parlor. No money down. Easy term payment. I tell you something. This installment plan, it's a curse of the working man. Where are you going? Got to talk to the brothers. This water's cold again. Oh, I'm sorry, the fire's gone out. Forget it. Forget it? I chop wood for the stove five times a day, every time I remember. I remember that across the tracks, the Anglo miners have hot water in pipes, in bathrooms, inside. Do you think I like living this way? What do you want of me? But if your union... If you're asking for better conditions, why can't you ask for decent plumbing too? We did. Got lost in the shuffle. What? We can't get everything at once. Right now we have more important demands. What's more important than sanitation? Safety of the men. That's more important. Five accidents this week. All because of speed up. You're a woman. You don't know what it's like up there. First, we gotta get equality on the job. Then we'll work on these other things. Give it to the men. I see. The men. Your strike may be for your demands. But what wives want, that comes later. Always later. Now, don't you start talking against the union again. What has it got me? Your union. Speranza? Have you forgotten what it was like before the union came? When Estella was a baby and we couldn't even afford a doctor when she was sick? It was for our families we met in graveyards to build that union. All right, have your strike. I'll have my baby. But no hospital will take me because I'll be a striker's wife. The store will cut off our credit and the kids will go hungry. We'll get behind on the payments again. And then they'll come and take away the radio. Is that all you care about? That radio? Can't you think of anything except yourself? If I think of myself, it's because you never think of me. Never, never. Stop it. The children are watching. Stop it. Ah. <laughs> That's a problem. It has to be taken care of. The company will always tell you those things. We know it's not safe for miners to work alone. But they don't work alone in other mines. Anglos always work in bears. So why should I risk my life? Because I'm a Mexican? But that's in the demands. We're negotiating. Three months of negotiations. And nothing happens. Even with Brother Barnes here from the International, what have we got? No race, no seniority, no safety code, nothing. Take a drink. Calmate. I say we gotta take action. Now. The rest of men feel the way you do? He talked for all of us. Did you ever stop to think maybe they want us to strike? They don't want no strike. Not with their war boom on. Then why is the company hanging tough? They signed contracts with the other locals. Why not this one? Because most of us here are Mexican-American. Because we want equality with Anglo miners. The same pay, same conditions. Exactly. And equality is the one thing the bosses can't afford. The biggest club they have over the Anglo locals is, well, at least you get more than the Mexicans. OK. So discrimination hurts the Anglo too. But it hurts me more. And I've had enough of it. But you don't pull a strike when the bosses want it. So they can smash your union. You wait till you're ready so you can win. Do the bosses wait? No sanitation. So my kids get sick. Does the company doctor wait? 20 bucks. So we miss one payment on the radio bought from my wife. Does the company store wait? They will take it away. Why is the boss's store in such a hurry? Trying to scare us, that's why. To make us afraid to move. To hang on to what we got and like it. Well, I don't like it. And I'm not scared. And I'm fed up to hear. Hey, Ramon, te buscan. What are you doing here? Something wrong with Mama? I thought maybe you forgot. Forgot what? It's Mama Saint's Day. What a 
kid. He can't wait. It's my uh, wife's ain't stay. I was going to ask you, brothers, how about a mañanita, huh? What time? For a mañanita, the later the better. I'm a fool. No, you aren't. Was it expensive, the beer? Antonio paid for it. Forgive me for saying you never thought of me. I did forget. Luis told me. All the next week, I kept thinking about my mañanita. I had never had so nice a party. It was like a song running through my mind, a daydream to lighten the long day's work. One, two, three. <laughs> we all forgot our troubles at the mañanita. Even Ramon. I couldn't dance that night. Not in my condition. But I wasn't really jealous when he danced with the others. Because it was so good just to see him smile again. And then one morning I was hanging out my wash. And while we were talking, the ladies came. They were a kind of delegation. It was about the sanitation, they said. The Anglo miners have bathrooms and hot running water. Why shouldn't we? I know. I spoke to Ramon about it only a week ago. He said they dropped it from the union demands. Es lo de siempre. We've got to make him understand. Make the man face up to it. Show her the sign. We'll make a lot of signs like this, then we'll get all the wives together and go right up to the mine. To the mine? Sure, where they're negotiating in the company office, we'll go up there and picket the place. Then both sides will see we mean business. A picket line of ladies? Sure, why not? You can count me in. Luz. Listen, we ought to be in a wood chopper's union. Chop wood for breakfast, chop wood, wash his clothes, chop wood, heat the iron, chop wood, scrub floors, chop wood, cook his dinner. And do you know what he will say when he comes home? What have you been doing all day? Reading funny papers? Come on, Esperanza. How about it? We got to. No, no. I can't. If Ramon ever found me in a picket line... He'd what? Beat you? No. No. Accidente.
Zelinsky. How did this happen? Well, he wandered into a drift when that fellow was blasted. I told you it would happen. It's bound to happen when a man works alone. Why did you give the man a warning signal? Your foreman says that's a foreman's job. Well, I checked the drift just before he blasted. It was all clear. The man must have been asleep or something. You weren't even there. You were back at the station. Kalinsky told me. You're a liar, Pancho. A no good, dirty... <laughs> Get a hold on yourself. A man's been hurt. I'm as sorry about it as you are, savvy? Accidents are costly to everyone. And to the company, most of all. Now, I see no reason to treat the occasion like a paid holiday. Suppose we all get back to work. Barton? All right, fellas, the excitement's over. Let's get to it. I order your trail. See, see. What are they saying? No savvy. Barnes, what about it? Tell the men to get back to work. They don't work for me. I work for them. Luis. You brothers. See, 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 night, the men held a union meeting just to make the walkout official. It didn't take them long. They voted to strike 93 to 5. And Teresa said, now was the time for us to go in. I didn't want to. I had never been to a union meeting. But the others said, one go, all go. Tenemos varios agravios, hermanos, y muchas demandas. Pero todo esto se puede traer a un punto básico, la igualdad. The meeting was nearly over when we came in. Charlie Vidal was making a speech. He said there was only one issue in this strike, equality. But the mine owners would stop at nothing to keep them from getting equality. Con el hecho de dividir el anglo del mexicano-americano. He said the bosses would try to split the anglo and mexican-american workers and offer rewards to one man if he would sell out his brother. Hermanos, solamente hay una defensa contra de esta táctica. Y esto es unidad. La unidad de todos los hombres trabajadores. Yes, uh, you ladies have an announcement? Well, it's not an announcement, I guess. Only the ladies wanted me to... Louder! Consuelo, will you speak from over here?
the ladies have been talking about sanitation. And we were thinking if the issue is equality. Like you say it is, then maybe we ought to have equality in plumbing too. I mean, maybe we could make it a strike demand. Some of the ladies thought it might be a good idea to have a ladies auxiliary. Well, we'd like to help out if we can. I think I can speak for all the brothers in saying we appreciate the ladies offering to help. But it's getting late, and I suggest that we table it. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. <laughs> Why didn't you support her? You're the worst of the lot. But Teresa, you can't push these things too fast. You were pushing her right, pushing us right back in our place. Why didn't you check this thing with me? It's embarrassing. At least you didn't make a fool of yourself like Consuelo. It's not a bad idea to make sanitation one of our demands. But honey... Or why don't you just put a sign outside? No dogs, no women allowed. began, much like any other strike. There would be no settlement, the company said, till the men returned to their jobs. But the back-to-work movement didn't work. And so the company recruited a few strike breakers from out of town. But they usually lost their nerve when they saw the size of the picket line. The sheriff's men were always there. They stood around showing off their weapons. But the men only marched day after day, week after week. At first, it was an unwritten rule that the women stay at home. The union gave us rations, and we had to figure out how to feed our families on them. But then one morning, Mrs. Salazar went to the picket line. Her husband had been killed in a strike many years before, and she wanted to be there. Nobody remembers just how it happened. But one day, Mrs. Salazar started marching with them, and she kept on marching with them. After a while, some of the women began to bring coffee for their husbands, and maybe a couple of tacos, because a man gets tired and hungry on picket duty. It was about that time that the union decided maybe they'd better set up a ladies' auxiliary after all. I didn't come to the lines at first. My time was near, and besides, Ramon didn't approve. But Ramon is a man who loves good coffee, and he swore that the other ladies made it taste like zinc sludge. So one day, I made the coffee. Prieto, Sebastián Prieto. Haven't seen him for three days now. Hey, Ramon, listen to this. 
chief foreman come to me last night, said he'd make a shift foreman out of me. If I start back to work movement, Jenkins, why string along with him to Molly? I just said I come like to Molly's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Two scabs got through on the other side of the hill. We chased the rest back. Recognize them? Anglos from out of town. But they're not miners, I could tell that. They don't know Zeke from Chinola. Okay, take five, get yourself a cup of coffee. Hey, Ramon, here comes the super. How's it going? Well, those new fellas you hired from out of town, we brought them up here by truck this morning. They took one look at that picket line, turned tail. They don't look so rough to me. Well, Mr. Hartwell, they've got some pretty tough hombres there. Especially that picket captain, uh, what's his name, Ray? Raymond, something or other. Oh, yes, I know that one. That's their main picket line. They have another post on the back road. The roving patrols all over the place. On company property? Why don't you have them thrown off? It's all company property, Mr. Hartwell. The store, the housing area, everything. Where are you going to throw them? And who does the throwing? Well, are they going to let us pass? Eventually. This is just a little ritual to impress us with their power. Now, why don't you let this gentleman pass? Don't you know who's in that car? It's the paymaster from Moscow with our gold. No, no. It's the president of the company himself. Come all the way out here to make Jenkins general manager. <laughs> so why are you acting for me? Childish. Well, they're like children in many ways. Sometimes you have to humor them. Sometimes you have to spank them. And sometimes you have to take their food away. Oh, here comes the one that we're talking about. <laughs> He's quite a character. Claims his grandfather once owned the land where the mine is now. <laughs> Want to go up to your office, Mr. Alexander? Naturally. You think I parked here for a cup of coffee? You're welcome to one. No, thanks. The man would like to know who this gentleman is. That's none of their affair. It's all right. It's no secret. My name's Hartwell. I'm from the company's eastern office. You mean Delaware? No, New York. New York? You're not the company president by any chance? No. Too bad. The men have always wanted to take a look at the president. But you come out here to settle the strike. Well, if that's possible. It's possible. Just negotiate. Are we talking to a union spokesman? Well, not exactly. But I wish he were one. He knows more about mining than those pie cards we've had to deal with. I mean it. I know your work record. You were in line for foreman when this trouble started. Did you know that? Yeah, so you had a real future with this company. But. They let those reds stir you up, and now they'll sell you down the river. Why don't you wake up, Ray? Huh? That's your name, isn't it, Ray? My name is Quintero. Mr. Quintero. Are you going to let us pass, or do I have to call the sheriff? There's nothing stopping you. I was wrong. They don't want Jenkins for general manager. They want me. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard that fellow. What a line. I was up for a foreman, he says. Fíjate. What's the matter? It's nothing. Just a little catch. Papa, Papa, over here. Is that Luis? What is he doing? Playing hooky again? Louise, come back here. Papa, we seen them. Two scats over there. They're hiding over there in the gully. Hold it, brothers. You, Antonio, Alfredo, Chente, come with me. The rest of you stay on the line.
Sieto. Sebastian Prieto. Come on, listen to me. For the love of God. You. You. I'd expect it of an Anglo, Come yes. Come on, I'm in but the jail. You. I had to get a job. You, who the black sucker. Come on, my kid. Tu. Traidora tu gente. Rompe huelgas, my desgraciado. You think my kids have enough to eat, you rat? I know it's wrong. Just let me go. I live down. Just let me go. You think I was going to work you over? I wouldn't dirty my hands on you. you stop? Want to have a little talk with you while you slug that fellow back there. But that's a lie. I didn't. No, there's no way to talk to a white man. No, no, no. Go back and get a blanket, Julia, so we can carry her. Hey, Vance, I thought you said this bullfighter was full of pepper. Don't look so peppery now. Oh, but he is. He's full of chili this morning. <laughs> He likes it hot. His Chiquita makes it good and hot for him, don't she, Poncho? Sheriff, we need a doctor quick. There's a woman gonna have a baby. You take me for an ambulance driver? There's a company doctor. We don't have a car if you'll just get him. Are you kidding? Company doctor won't come to no picket line. Home. There is some time. Take her inside. Hold your head up, Poncho. That's no way to sit. I'll not leave you all, you light. Forget me, Pooh. We shall be stuck to never be born. Ramon was in the hospital for a week and then in the county jail for 30 days, charged with assault and resisting arrest. But I made up my mind to postpone the christening till he got out of jail. We christened him Juan. That night we had a double celebration, Juanito's christening Ramon's homecoming. We put all the children to sleep in the bedroom, as usual, and the men took over the parlor, as usual. Five thousand dollars. That beats. Then you ten thousand. Dog. All right, let's see him. Jesus, Lord. Come to Papa. Hear those deputies, log Chente. Yeah. Been lots of provocation lately. They figure if they can lock up the leadership on some phony charge, maybe they can bust the strike. Are we going to let him play poker all night? I want to dance. With whose husband? With any of them, even my own. If you dance with my husband, you'll have to put up with this. And another thing, your attitude towards Anglos. If you're going to be a leader... What attitude? You lump them all together. Anglo workers and Anglo bosses. He's a guest in my house, isn't he? You're even suspicious of him. Maybe. I think he's got a few things to learn about our people. Go on. Spill it. Well, you're the organizer. You work out strike strategy, and most of the times you're dead right. When you figure everything the rank and files to do down to the last detail, 
You don't give us anything to think about. Are you afraid we're too lazy to take initiative? You know I don't think that. Maybe not. But there's another thing. Like when you came in tonight, I heard you ask your wife, who's that? His grandfather? That's Juarez, the father of Mexico. If I wouldn't know a picture of George Washington, you would say I was an awful dumb Mexican. I've never seen it fail. Try to give Ramon a friendly criticism and he kicks it right back in your face. No, he's right. I've got a lot to learn. Now we've got that settled, build a cart. Makes you feel any better, he's got even less use for women. What are they talking about in there? Discussing each other's weaknesses? I didn't know they had any. Right now, Ramon's on the receiving end. If we shut out the women from the life of the Come union... Come on, bet! Let's break up that game. We can't think of them just as housewives, but as partners. And we have to treat them as such. Well, look who's talking. A new world's champion of women's rights. Well, cut it out, Ruth. Me? I'm a camp follower, following his organizer from one mining camp to another. Montana, Colorado, Idaho. But does he ever think to organize the women? No. Wives don't count in the Anglo locals either. <laughs> Not that I like the way you treat your wife, Ramon. I think you're all wrong. But when Dr. Barnes here gives you his cure-all for female problems, just ask him if he's tried it at home. Hey, Esperanza. Esperanza is nursing the baby. There goes the game. Good. Consuelo, turn off the radio. Come on, Papa. On your feet. You'll never have it so good. He'll have it good. Someday. What were they saying about you in there? They say I'm not good to you. You are not good to me in jail. I'd lie in my cell in my cot and I couldn't sleep. With the bugs and the stink and the heat. And I'd say to myself, think of something nice. Something beautiful. And then I'd think of you and my heart would pound against the cut for love of you. Not just Juanito. You'll have it good too, Esperanza. We're gonna win the strike. What makes you so sure? Because if we lose, we lose more than a strike. We lose the union, and the men know it. And if we win, we win more than a few demands. We win something bigger, hope. Hope for our kids. Juanito can't grow strong on milk alone. Is this the Quintero place? What do you want? We got a court order. You can't come in here without a warrant. We got the warrant, too. We don't want no trouble. All we want is this radio here. We hate to break in on you folks like this, but this here fellow owns the radio store, and he got himself a repossession order. Don't touch it. We don't want no trouble with you, Quintero. We got orders to repossess this machine. I said, don't touch it. Let him take it. Over my dead body. I don't want your dead body. I don't want you back in jail either. But it's yours. I won't let them. Can't you see they want to start a fight so they can lock you all up at one time? real music. But the strike did not end. It went on and on, into the fourth month, the fifth, the sixth. The company still refused to negotiate. They tried to turn the Anglo miners against us. 
They say that all Mexicans ought to be sent back where they came from. How can I go back where I come from? The check that I was born in is buried on the company property. Why don't nobody ever tell the bosses to go back where they come from? There wouldn't be any bosses in the state of New Mexico if they did. Brother, live to see the day. Jenkins ain't no boss. Mean we're gonna let people like Jenkins stay here? You can't send him back to Oklahoma. It would be inhuman. But I was born in Texas. Oh, no! That's even worse. And the seventh month came. We couldn't buy food at a company store. By now, the strike fund was nearly gone. A few families couldn't take it any longer. And where they went, we do not know. And so it was decided by the union that hardship cases should seek work in other mines. And this was done. Strikers who found jobs divided their pay with the union so the rest of us might eat. Ramon was not a hardship case. Only three children to feed. Even so, the mine owners might have starved us out, were it not for the help we got from the international in Denver and from other locals. And we, who thought no one outside our county knew of our troubles or cared if they did know, found we were wrong. Letters came from our own people of the Southwest, from far away, Butte, Chicago, Birmingham, New York, messages of solidarity and the crumpled dollar bills of working men. We women were helping, and not just as cooks and coffee makers. A few of the men made jokes about it, but the work had to be done, so they let us stay. No one knew how great a change it was until the day of the crisis. The sheriff was smiling, so we knew he brought bad news. The company had got a court injunction, ordering the strikers to stop picketing. A taft Hartley injunction, they called it. It meant heavy fines and jail sentences for the strikers if they disobeyed. A decision had to be made at once, whether to obey the order or not. If we obey the court, the strike will be lost. The scabs will move in as soon as our picket line is gone. If we defy the court, our pickets will be arrested. And the strike will be lost anyway. So there it is, brothers. The bosses have us coming and going. I just want to say this. No matter how you decide, the International will back you up as it's always backed you up. This is a democratic union. The decision is up to you. Brother Sherman, if we give up now, if we obey this rotten Taft Hartley, we are fools and cowards. There is only one way. Fight them. Fight them all. Come on. We don't gain nothing. They'll arrest us. Que nos arresten. Que es todo lo que les preocupa. No se dan cuenta que están arrestando a nuestra unión. The men quarreled. They made brave speeches. It seemed that Brother Barnes was right. The company had them coming and going. It seemed the strike was lost. Brother Chairman, if you read the court injunction carefully, you will see that it only prohibits striking minors from picketing. We women are not striking minors. We will take over your picket line. <laughs> Don't laugh. 
We have a solution, you have none. Brother Quintero was right when he said we'll lose 50 years of gains. He will lose this strike. Your wife and children too. But this we promise. If women take your places on the picket line, the strike will not be broken and no scabs will take your job. If that's a motion, only members of the union can make a motion. I so move. Second. You have heard the motion. The floor is open for debate. Señor Presidente. Si permitimos que nuestras mujeres se mezclen en este asunto, nos vamos a convertir en la burla de todo el movimiento obrero. Hermano, te equivoco de eso. Las hermanas pueden ayudarnos a nosotros. Ellas no se manchan con ayudarnos a nosotros. Son nuestras compañeras. ¿Y qué es peor? Luz asked him which was worse, to hide behind a woman's skirt or go down on his knees before the boss. Brothers. We don't count enough on our women. The bosses don't count on them at all. Will the bosses win now? Because there is no unity between the men, their wives, and their sisters? Carlota Sanchez said she didn't think picketing was proper for ladies. It wasn't nice, maybe even a sin. I say let's give the sisters a chance. And what will happen when the cops come and beat our women up? Are we going to stand there and watch them? No. We'll take over anyway. And we'll be right back where we started. Only worse, even more humiliated. Brothers, brothers, I beg you, don't allow this. Call the question. All right. The question's been called. You brothers know what you are voting on that the sisters of the auxiliary take over the picket line. All those in favor will so signify. Brother Chairman, point of order. I, uh, I don't know anything about uh, these questions of parliament, but um, you men are voting on something the women are to do or not to do. So I think it's only fair if the women be allowed to vote. Especially if they have to do the job. Brothers and sisters, it would be unconstitutional to permit women to vote at a union meeting. No objection. We could adjourn this meeting. No! No, no, no. no. Wait, wait. And reconvene this meeting as a community mass meeting with every adult entitled to a vote. I so move. All right. On the motion to adjourn, all those in favor will raise their hands. Aye. All those opposed. The ayes have it. Now every adult is entitled to a vote. Who won the original question? All those in favor that the sisters take over the picket line will so signify by raising their hands. All those opposed? The motion has carried a hundred and three to eighty five.
And so they came, the women. They came from Sink Town and the hills beyond, from other mining camps, 10, 20, 30 miles away. Women we had never seen before. Women who had nothing to do with the strike. Somehow they heard about the women's picket line, and they came. And the men came too. I think they were afraid. Afraid the women wouldn't stand fast. Or maybe afraid they would. But not all the women went to the picket line. Some were forbidden by their husbands. I was one of them. It's not fair. I should be there with them. After all, I'm the one who got the women the vote. The union don't run my house. Those Anglo dames stirred you up to make fools of yourself. But you don't see any of them down there. Yes, I do. There is Ruth Barnes. She's the organizer's wife. She's got to be there. No, she wants to be there. And there is Mrs. Kalinsky. There's Jenkins' wife. You don't see her on no picket line. Anglo husbands can also be backward. Can be what? Backward. Can't I even put in an appearance? With a baby in your arms? The baby likes to be walked. It helps him burp. Hey, girls, wait a minute. Don't you want us to leave our pistol? Shut up. <laughs> What's so amusing? They're fond of your court order. Oh, I'm not so sure about that, Mr. Alexander. Better the law, you know. All that injunction says is there's no picketing by miners. Whose side are you on, anyway? Ah, don't get excited. They'll scatter like quail. Well, let's get at it before another hundred dames shows up. Uh, all right, boys. What about these? Forget it. They'll scatter like quail. standing there. Do something. Relax. But women are getting hurt. We've got to take over. They're doing all right. Anyway, looks like you got your hands full. Mama. She's coming. Charlie, the dog gave her a lift. Boy, did you see the way Mama whooped that deputy? Knocked the gun right I don't want you it. hanging around there. Here. You all right? Sure.
Must have been some experience for you, huh? Yes. I guess you've got enough today to last your lifetime. I'm going back tomorrow. Listen, you might get hurt. I might. If you think I'm going to play nursemaid from now on, you're crazy. I've had these kids all day. I've had them since the day they were born. I'm telling you, I don't stay home with these kids tomorrow. Okay. And tomorrow, I take the kids with me to the picket line. And so I came back the next day, and every day for the next month. I kept Juanita in the coffee shack, and when the weather was good and there was peace on the lines, I brought his crib outside. Estela played with the little ones, and Luis, Luis was in school. Ramon came every day, just watching. The ladies, well, they criticized Ramon for not keeping the kids. For a while, the sheriff's men left us alone. But then they cursed us, insulted us, called us foul names. It started again. They used tear gas again. This time the wind was against us. We spread out as we had planned, and I took the baby away from the danger as we had planned. But they couldn't break our line. They couldn't break it. Well? I've tried everything but shooting them down. You haven't tried locking them up. You want them all arrested? No. Just the ringleaders, the, the fire eaters, and the ones with big families. Barton, where's that boy? Hey, you. Come here. I'm going to give you a choice. You can go home or go to jail. No ifs, ands, or buts. Get off the picket line or get arrested. Okay, point him out. That one, Teresa Villan. She's the leader. You're under arrest. Home of the hoose girl. What's that be? Keep marching, sisters. Let's show some discipline. But Teresa, they'll charge us with resisting arrest. Keep marching, sisters. Keep marching. Mrs. Salazar, the old one. Shana Diaz, that one in the blue dress. Luz Morales, that one. Mrs. Kalinsky, the Anglo. Ruth Barnes, she's the organizer's wife. And Dalla Alvarez, the pretty one. And that one. With the baby? She's Ramon Quintero's wife. He doesn't like her being here. Take care of the baby, Esperanza. Don't worry about Juanito. We can take care of Stella, too. No, the baby stays with me.
told you ten times. We have no food. We have no beds. We have no beds. So will you please, please, shut up. <laughs> He can't drink this milk. It'll make him sick. He's on a formula. I was a fool. I shouldn't. Don't you worry. We'll get some action. <laughs> the baby can't drink this store milk. We want his formula. You want the what? The formula. The formula. The formula. We want the formula. We want the formula. We want the formula. We want the formula. Well, you can get the JP to swear out peace bonds, or you can heist the bail high enough to keep him in jail. Keep him? What am I supposed to do? Feed him out of my own pocket? What I want to know, Mr. Hartwell, is when are you going to settle this thing? You won't negotiate with them? What do you want, anyway? The company has other minds. You've got to see the larger picture. Once these people get out of hand, What are you doing here? Ain't you seen enough of me? I come for my kids. They're in your jail. But you've played every trump in your hand. They're not dead yet. Not every trump. Such as what? I can't shut them dames up. They keep yelling about a formula. A what? A formula for the baby or something. His kid. You some milk for the baby. So what's all the belly aching about? That milk is no good. Queremos la formula. Queremos la, Queremos la formula. The baby has a formula. You can eat the gift that you be responsible. Yeah. I, yeah. I am not running a drugstore. You girls got only yourselves to blame for this. You could be back with your families in an hour. All you got to do is to sign a pledge not to go back on the picket line. Queremos comida. 
Queremos camas. Queremos baños. Queremos comida. Queremos camas. Will you kids get out of those baskets? No tiene fin. Three hours just to heat enough water to wash the stuff. I'm telling you something. If this track is ever settled, which I doubt, I'll never go back to work for that company unless they install hot running water for us. Should have been a union demand from the beginning. You're telling me? Charlie Vidal says there's two kinds of slavery. Wage slavery and domestic slavery. The woman question, he calls it. The woman question? Yeah, the problem is what to do about it. So, what does he want to do about them? He says give them quality. Equality is in job, equality is in home, and also sex equality. What do you mean, sex equality? You know. Lo que es bueno para el hombre es bueno para la mujer. He's some organizer, that Charlie. He can sure organize a wife right out of your home. Papa, can't I leave now? There's a meeting of the junior shop stewards. The what? The junior shop stewards. There's lots of ways we can help. Don't I have enough troubles without them chipping you up to reform school? But you need all the help you can get. You've got a helper around the house. But you've got me doing everything. Mama never used to make me dry the dishes. You should have a helper without being asked. Hasta mañana. How do you feel? I'm okay. Four nights. How did you sleep? I ate so much fuss, they finally brought Katze. I nearly lost my wife for I yelling so much. My voice is telling Katze the baby. They're asleep. Did you have to find a bash not to go back to the picket line? No, no, we wouldn't do it. But if you go back, they'll lock you up again. No, no, they say it's had enough of us. We're talking crazy. Well, I'm not to lose. Hi. Hi, Ruth. Good Hello. Well? It's all set. Consola Squad can take the day off tomorrow. We're taking over. All right. We'll work it out. We've got to have a talk, you and me. All right. But later, we have got a meeting now. A meeting? Yes, to plan for a picket line tomorrow. You can sit in if you want. Now, let us see. Who's available? China's husband is out of town on that delegation to see the governor. And a whole lot of men going on a fuel hunting expedition tomorrow. Thirty or forty of them. So their wives are out too. But we can ask them to keep our kids so the rest of us can... What are we going to do about him, Esperanza? It's about time he was housebroken. Maybe if a delegation of us talk to him. I have to work it out with him myself. got a friend in the Bureau of Mines. You know what he says? They ain't never gonna open that mine up again. How come? 
Oh, he said George went out. So help me. Bull. Lot of bull. That's a rich man. I know. But what's the difference? They'll never settle with us. Never. Hey, what you know? It's him. It's him, the president. The president of the company. Let me see this. Listen to this. Man of distinction. J. Hamilton Miller, financier, business executive, board chairman of Continental Factors, and president of Delaware Zinc Incorporated. Wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute now, some more. An enthusiastic sportsman and expert marksman, Mr. Miller manages to find time every year for an African safari. He leaves this month for Kenya, where he hopes to bag his 13th lion. I'm going to frame this. Look, Ramon. Kind of look at the larger picture. So the guy is a lion hunter. What you expect him to hunt, rabbit? Boy, oh boy, would I like to get me some venison. I ain't tasted meat in four weeks. How about it, Ramon? Let's take off for a couple of days, huh? Why ask me? Am I running this strike? If you want permission to go over the hill, go ask the lady's auxiliary. I waited up till midnight. You weren't waiting for me. That meeting only lasted 10 minutes. The first night I am home, you run to the beer parlor. What is it? Can't you bear the sight of me? Be still. But you wanted to talk. Tell me. The old way? What's your new way? What's it mean? You're right to neglect your kids? Where are you going? Hunting. When? Sun up. Alone? No. Ramon, you can't. Why not? I'm not needed here. But you are needed. Especially now with most of the other men away. You are the captain of the standby squad. Sure, the standby squad. Stand by for the funeral. Whose funeral? We are doing all right. There hasn't been a scout near the picket line for three days. And you know why? Because the company knows they can starve us out. Even if it takes them another two or three months. What's it to them if the mine shut down a little longer? It's a lot to them. They do anything to open that mine. Ah, they've got other minds. You don't see the larger picture. They've got millions, millions. They can outlast us, and they know it. You mean you are ready to give up? Who said anything about giving up? I'll never go back to that company on my knees, never. You want to go down fighting, is that it? I don't want to go down fighting. I want to win. Ramon, we are not getting weaker. We are stronger than ever before. They are getting weaker. They thought they could break our picket line, and they failed. And now they can't win unless they pull up something big and pull it up fast. Like what? I don't know. But I can see it coming. It's like a law before the storm. Charlie Vidal says. Charlie Vidal says. Don't throw Charlie Vidal up to me. Charlie's my friend. I need friends. Why are you so afraid to have me as your friend? I don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't. Have you learned nothing from this strike? 
Why are you afraid to have me at your side? Do you still think you can have dignity only by having none? Talk of dignity. After what you've been doing. Yes. I talk of dignity. The Anglo bosses look down on you, and you hate them for it. Stay in your place, you dirty Mexican. That's what they tell you. But why must you say to me, stay in your place? Do you feel better having someone lower than you? Shut up. You're talking crazy. Whose neck shall I stand on to make me feel superior? And what will I have out of it? I don't want anything lower than I am. I am low enough already. I want to rise and to push everything up with me as I go. Will you be still? And if you can't understand this, you are a fool. Because you can't win this fight without me. You can't win anything without me. Oh. That would be the old way. Never try it on me again. Never. I'm going to bed now. Sleep where you please, but not with me. So they had a little taste of what it's like to be a woman. And they run away. With Ramon, it's pride. I spoke out of the bitterness in me, and he was hurt. Anything worth learning is a hurt. These changes come with pain. For other husbands, too. Not just Ramon. You're ready to give up? You want to go down fighting, is that it? I don't want to go down fighting. I want to win. Ramon, we are not getting weaker. We are stronger than ever before. They are getting weaker. Have you learned nothing from this strike? I can feel it coming. It's like a lull before the storm. They thought they could break our picket lines and they failed. And now they can't win unless they pull off something big and pull it off fast. Brothers, we've got to go back. Esperanza, where's Ramon? Did he go hunting with the others? Where? Where can we find him, do you know? No. Dear hunters. Deserters, that's what they are. Something's wrong. Charlie, tell us. The company has an eviction order. Eviction! Eviction! Where? In La Casa de Quintero. Eviction! In Ande. In La Casa de Quintero. Eviction! 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 Don't worry. Quintero's gone hunting with the others. A victim first, the rest will be easy. Let their neighbors watch. It'll scare some sense into them. Can't we do something? All right, girls, get back, get back.
Pay any attention to him. Go back and get the rest of the stuff. What are you saying? This means they have given up trying to break our picket line. Now we can all fight together. All of us. Obstructing justice. You make them behave, savvy? I can't do nothing, Sheriff. You know how it is. They won't listen to a man anymore. You want me to lock them up again? You want them in your lockup again? <laughs> Yeah, the guys with the mail. Got any more ideas? I don't make policy. I'll talk to New York. I think maybe we'd better settle this thing for the present. We didn't know then that we had won the strike. But our hearts were full. And when Ramon said... Thanks, sisters and brothers. Esperanza, thank you for your dignity. You were right. Together, we can push everything up with us as we go. Then I knew we had won something they could never take away. Something I could leave to my children, and they, the salt of the earth, would inherit it.